Good evening and welcome to the St. Michael's University School Grade 12 Graduation Ceremony. Please join us for the singing of O Canada. Please be seated. Good evening. It, it's a pleasure to welcome everyone to the closing ceremonies for the graduating class for St. Michael's University School. Please bear with me while I welcome some of our more far-flung guests today who have come great distances. It's a bit of a tradition, and I'm not about to break it now. Bonjour, c'est un grand plaisir de vous souhaiter tous bienvenue ici à St. Michael's University School. Buenos dias. Es mi placer tener a todos ustedes aquí en St. Michael's University School. Guten Tag. Es ist ein großes Vergnügen, Sie alle hier in St. Michael's University School zu willkommen. Ngon, fun ying ne de lai do li do tsam gun St. Michael's University School. Anyong haseo, St. Michael's University School e wa cho so komap supnida. Ohayo gozaimasu. Honjitsu we wa waza waza kokoni okoshi kudasari arigato gozaimasu. Tsao an ching cheng fe chong huaning ni man dao St. Michael's University School. These are some of the languages of SMUS and some of the languages of the world. On Saturday night, Mr. Rodford celebrated the fact that in attendance at the grad gala, and therefore tonight also, almost all of the 26 countries that our students come from are represented. Welcome to all of you. Our school seeks the excellence in all of us with passion and compassion. We are a community shaped by the pursuit of truth and goodness, providing outstanding preparation for higher learning and for life. This is our school's mission. In the middle of it is the word community. My words today are a reflection on our community we are all part of it, and the students are at the heart of it. The students, you have a place in the community that is cemented together and defined in particular by the bonds and friendships and relationships that you have forged together by experiences like the school musical, your sports team, your out trips, service trips to places like Kenya or Nicaragua, life in residence, and many other examples. Yours are close friendships that will last for decades and possibly forever. 
Some experiences are about friendship and more. I've described before to the students here tonight the visit that my wife Joan and I took to New York in early October 2001. It was three weeks after the September 11th terrorist attacks. At that time, traveling anywhere in North America was very disrupted. Uh, the, the news coming out of New York was somber, it was tragic, and it was somewhat chaotic. I sent an email to some of our alum who were there, and I asked them, should we still come? Our reception was scheduled for the first, first week of October. So they wrote back, and they said, definitely. We would really like you to come. It would be like having a visit from home. So Joan and I arrived. We had our reception at the Algonquin Hotel, which is quite a storied hotel in New York. The alums started arriving. Two students who were attending New York University had seen the second plane hit the, hit the second tower. Another alum arrived having just come from a memorial service. Everyone who attended knew someone who had been killed in the attacks. About six months ago, we had our most recent New York reception, and several of the people who were at that one in 2001, uh, I, I asked them if they remembered it, and they remembered it clearly and in detail. For them, it was a very grateful memory. Four years later, on July 6, 2005, Joan and I arrived in London for our alumni reception, which was the following night at the Oxford and Cambridge Club. The next morning when we got up, all we heard was sirens and silence. And it's, that's an eerie thing to hear in a bustling city of millions of people. Just a couple of hours earlier, terrorists had bombed parts of London in a coordinated attack. And there was the subway that was attacked. There was a double-decker bus. In the end, 52 people died and over 700 were injured. Roads were closed. The internet was down. There were chaotic reports on television. Joan and I found, you'll guess it, a Starbucks where we had internet. So we were able to get back in touch with people. Later that, that evening, we walked to the reception. It wasn't far. We weren't sure if anyone was even going to show up. So we arrived at, uh, at the Oxford and Cambridge Club, and, and it was deserted. Uh, but there were a few people working, including someone who was des designated for our reception. About 15 minutes after the start, Joan and I were still the only people there, and we had done an inventory of all the hors d'oeuvres and tested most of them. Uh, and then an alum arrived who had come by train from southwest England. We didn't know if he had just simply turned his television and radio off or if he knew what he was doing. At any rate, he arrived. And about two or three minutes later, another pair of alumni arrived who had only been at the school for one year. Then another alum arrived who had walked three kilometers to the reception. Another one arrived by taxi. Another had an office nearby and was working late and thought he'd better drop by just in case anyone showed up. And at the end of the night, we had one of the largest crowds that we'd ever had. The third example I want to mention is much less dramatic. One of the pastimes that I don't get time enough to enjoy very much is golf. It's always a bad sign if the headmaster is too good at golf. 
Last week at our annual fun celebration, a parent spoke to me and he said, I haven't seen you at the golf club since before Christmas. I said, well, it's because I haven't been there since before Christmas. About five years ago, at another event at the school, I talked to an older alum, one of our oldest, whose name was Derek Todd. And he said to me, I saw you out on the course last week. How was it? Now, the month was April. And uh, in April, in Victoria, and if you've been around here for, for a few days, you know it's also true of June, the weather is pretty unpredictable. All winter long, from November to sometime in April, you can, you're susceptible to these southeast winds that just rip through Victoria. Now, the, the Victoria Golf Club is right on the southeast corner of Vancouver Island. On the ninth tee, you feel like you're on the prow of a ship sailing into the United States. At any rate, this happened to be, the day I, I, I was talking about when Derek had seen me, was a, a lovely day. And so I told Derek, yeah, I'd had a good day, and I, I'd been playing with two students after school. And these students were excellent golfers, and we were on the ninth hole. And I told Derek, and of course, it was backed up. Now, it's very, very hard for two energetic teenage students, I think they were in grade 10 at the time, to sit still. So as they're waiting, they tried to find some things to do. Beside the tee box at, at the ninth hole, on this windswept point, there is some very tall, thick grass. So they got their sand wedges out and put a ball down and they tried to, and they succeeded in sliding their clubs underneath the ball, trying to outdo each other. And then they tried to slide their club underneath and hit the ball so it went straight up in the air, which they succeeded at. After a minute or two, one of them saw an otter that had climbed out of the rocks right by the ocean. And if you know anything about otters, you know they are, they're like puppies. They like to play. And so these two boys immediately took off after the otter, uh, knowing otters. And then they discovered a whole family of them. And they were scrambling over the rocks with the otters. And eventually the otters dove into the water and swam into a kelp bed uh, that was right by the shore. So I told this story to, to Derek, and he knew, knew very well that on the ninth tee at Victoria Golf Club, you, all, you often have a slowdown. There's two par threes in a row. And then, and he, he knew it well because he'd been playing at the course for 80 years. He had just turned 90. And he told me his grandson, who had gone to SMUS, had just graduated from Dartmouth College in New England. Now, Derek Todd died two years ago, and a year ago, I, I played golf with his son, Michael, in the school golf tournament. Michael was also an alum. Grads, you are all one of the threads that makes up the fabric of this community, which goes back before Derek Todd and it reaches into every corner of the world, to New York, and to London, to Kazakhstan, to Thailand, to Vietnam, to Brazil, to Oman, and 20 other countries. It is true that your strongest links will be your friends. These are bonds that are forged and that identify you and each other with this school. You became close friends and got ready for some of life's most important steps in this place that brings alum out and together in times that shake and test our beliefs and our definition of home, a home that we believe should be secure and stable. It's the place where you forged these bonds and which is now part of you and which you also carry out into the world with you. It's a place that believes in the excellence in you and me and all of us. It's a place that believes in 
passion and compassion, a place that believes in the pursuit of truth and goodness. This is our remedy and our defense against forces that would deny us a good life. A group of men and women who live and breathe these ideals are our teachers. I thank them for the job they do in bringing forth from these young men and women the great potential that is theirs. A few of our staff will not be with us next year. Scott Dawson has been with us for a short while teaching math for Alison Higginbotham. Megan Story has had a year's contract in our counseling department. Lawrence Wong and Sean Zhang have taught Mandarin, Mandarin for the last year. Lara Calton has worked in our learning resource department for the year. We also have several teachers that are going away next year for one year. Kira Ogle in learning resource is, will be taking a maternity leave. Allison Higginbotham in the math department is also taking a maternity leave. Terence Young, our English teacher, will be taking a year's leave of absence to work on his writing. And Mike Jackson in the science department will be taking a year's leave of absence to do what Mike does, which is to be a scientist. On behalf of the school, I want to thank those colleagues who are departing and those who are staying for their contribution. The head of school gets to receive gratitude for much that goes on at the school. In, in reality, these are the men and women who create the excellence we pursue. Grads, we who have taught you know that in doing so, we work in the service of something larger than we are, your future. You are now moving on to new adventures and new worlds. For you, grads, I have no advice, only aspirations. I hope you feel a sense of liberation as you graduate. I hope, you, I hope your diploma has been earned at the expense of some trials, some bruises, some late nights, and some skinned knees. If so, it will mean something. All the rules and guidelines of school are part of the great project of education which is to free young people to be most fully themselves and to defy those who would repress that freedom. I hope you have become better at thinking for yourself, at speaking for yourself, and at shaping your world. In closing, I simply ask you to remember us who have taught you for the best that we have done. We will certainly remember you fondly and vividly for the best that you have done. Vivat, thank you. Good evening, graduates, families, and friends. On behalf of the St. Michael's University School community, we would formally like to recognize the outstanding leadership of our head of school, Bob Snowden. Over the past 111 years, our school has developed an enviable reputation for outstanding students being guided by exemplary faculty and staff. For a fifth of our school's history, Bob has served as our head of school. Bob is known across the country as an outstanding educator, a leader of independent schools, and an innovator. He, like no one before him, has shaped the strategic direction of our school to its current position as one of the finest schools in Canada. Our school has become known for its strength of educational innovation brought by the strong commitment of the professional development of our valued, valued faculty and staff. Bob's contribution to our school will be seen and remembered 
in the years to come. His impact has been profound. We would also like to recognize the outstanding service of Joan Snowden. It is Joan that exemplifies all that is good in our school. Her genuine interest in our students and staff, her warm embrace and compassion are hallmarks of her contribution to our school. On this night, when we recognize our senior students, the graduation of our class of 2017, we also recognize the graduation of sorts of our first couple of SMU, Bob and Joan Snowden. Please join me in thanking Bob and Joan for their outstanding service to our school and to wish them both very well in their retirement. Vivat. Thank you, Blair. My name is Andy Rodford, and I'm the director of the Senior School and Deputy Head of School. It's my honor to host this celebration of the talents and accomplishments of some amazing young men and women. I share Mr. Snowden's welcome to this familiar yet transformed space where we will share this wonderful opportunity to watch your graduating son or daughter both in person and on this giant screen. So note to self, grads, about paying attention as the cameras move back and forth throughout the evening. <laughs> After which we will immediately recess to the Crothall Center Quad for pictures, refreshments, and further celebrations. It is now my pleasure to begin the celebration of our graduates. As you know, our academic advising system is led by a group of four remarkable educators who collectively guide and support our grade 10, 11, and 12 students through their course selections, their academic success planning, and their university applications, respectively. And that, of course, is just the tip of the iceberg of this important relationship between our students and these remarkable advisors. With this said, it is then fitting for each advisor to recognize and celebrate the accomplishments of their individual students with a graduation tribute as they walk across the stage to receive their diploma, a congratulatory handshake from Mr. Snowden, and an official welcome into the St. Michael's University School Alumni Association. Along with celebrating the graduates, each recipient of a major award will be announced by their respective academic advisor during the presentation of their tribute as they cross the stage to receive their diploma. For your reference, the description of all major awards can be found in the latter pages of your program. It is now my pleasure to invite Kate Knight to the podium to begin the proceedings and to recognize her group of this year's graduating class. Ms. Knight. I would like to call upon Bob Snowden, Head of School, and Teresa Price, President of the Parents Auxiliary, to present the students with their records of achievement and graduation diplomas. I also invite Alec Johnston to the stage to give the graduates an official welcome into the Alumni Association. We begin with Yunus Al-Riyami. Yunus joined our community from Oman in grade 11 and quickly embraced SMU culture. As a boarder in Harvey House, he served as house prefect and was also involved with the Intercultural Council. Eunice enjoyed playing cricket and soccer and hopes to bring his passion for both to the University of Washington, where he will study engineering. <laughs> Al Muhalab Al Siabi. Al Muhalab joined Barnacle House as a boarding student in grade 11 from Oman. During his time on campus, he enjoyed serving as a link leader peer tutor and member of the Intercultural Council, as well as taking part in soccer, track and field, and cricket. His favorite Canadian activity, however, is rock climbing. 
Al-Muhalab will miss the sense of family he experienced in boarding, but looks forward to studying engineering at Ryerson University. Nathan Anter. Nathan has been a part of SMU since grade seven. His highlights of his time on campus include participating in the academic council and rowing team. Nathan will bring his passion for economics and finance to the University of Toronto to study mathematical and physical sciences. <laughs> Daniel Cow. Daniel joined Harvey House as a boarder in grade nine. He enjoyed being involved with badminton, squash, scorekeeping, and outdoor leadership. He is grateful for his many friends from around the world. Daniel will be moving east in September to study economics at Queen's University. <laughs> Pandora Chen. Pandora brought a passion for music and service to SMU when she joined us from Taiwan in grade 10. A boarder in Winslow House, she was an active member of the Intercultural Council, as well as the Business, Scorekeeping, and Math Clubs. Pandora has very fond memories of the service trip to Argentina and of playing first violin in the school orchestra. She will pursue management and organizational studies at Western University before attending the Ivy School of Business. <laughs> Ming Deng. This talented musician joined our community in grade seven. In addition to playing in numerous bands, Ming was involved in the academic council, radio and math clubs, and as a peer tutor and member of the cross country team. He will take his passion for science to the University of Victoria, where he will work toward his eventual goal of becoming a pharmacist. <laughs> Stephanie Dunbar. Stephanie arrived at SMU in grade nine and has dazzled us with her prowess on the tennis and volleyball courts ever since. Not just an athlete, she has also served as a member of the service council, politics club, and grad fashion show committee. Stephanie will pack her lovely singing voice along as she travels to Ontario in September to pursue management and organizational studies at Western University. <laughs> Eddie Game. Eddie traded winters in Edmonton for early morning as a member of the rowing team when he joined Bolton House in grade 11. He made the most of his two years on campus through his involvement as a link leader with Athletics Council and as a player on the basketball and rugby teams. Eddie is venturing across the pond in September to study medicine at the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. Aaron Gelman. My first impression of Aaron when he arrived at SMU in grade 10 was that he talked as fast as he could drum. This talented musician was a member of both the concert and jazz bands and always enjoyed a good debate anywhere on campus. Aaron will study social science at the University of Victoria with hopes of putting his verbal skills to good use as a lawyer in the near future. Hey. Gavin George. After joining us in grade nine, Gavin made his mark as a member of the academic council and reached for the top team. He was also an active participant in the music program. Gavin will be just around the corner in September when he begins his science studies at the University of Victoria. <laughs> Rosendo Gutierrez. This talented young man arrived at SMU in grade eight. He immersed himself in many activities, including the admissions and student councils, and musical and fashion shows. His fondest memories of SMU include the experiential program and the gold medal win at the National Rowing Championships. Rosendo will enjoy life in sunny Southern California when he begins his liberal arts studies at Pepperdine University next year. <laughs> Pascal Halliday. Pascal arrived from the Yukon in grade 10 and quickly became a supportive friend to many as a boarder in Simon's house. She was involved across all aspects of campus life, including the admissions council and school musical. She shared and developed new perspectives as a school prefect and member of outdoor leadership and enjoyed her time playing field hockey and swimming. Pascal will study arts at the University of Washington. Alana Hawes. 
Alana joined SMU in grade four, and our fine arts community has been stronger as a result. A gifted musician and artist, she was also a member of the school musical and this year's leader of the Pride Club. She even found the time to complete the Duke of Edinburgh Award. Alana will study zoology at the University of British Columbia, Okanagan in September. Ivan He. Ivan joined Harvey House as a boarder from China in grade nine. He was involved with the Intercultural Council and Business Club, as well as athletic pursuits such as basketball and cross country. Ivan looks forward to studying economics at Simon Fraser University. Ryan Heinsen. Basketball drew this young athlete from Whitehorse in grade 11, and our team and fans enjoyed every moment he was on the court. Ryan quickly made Barnacle House home as a boarding student and was elected house prefect. He was also a strong member of the volleyball and track and field teams, along with the athletic council. He will stay local in September when he begins his studies in computer science at the University of Victoria. As a strong athlete, scholar, and servant leader, Ryan is recognized as a recipient of the Carol Lobb Award. Simone Ingstrup. Simone joined the SMU community in grade nine. This talented creative writer and dancer was comfortable performing on stage as part of both the poetry recitation evenings and in the school musical, The Phantom of the Opera. She also helped to organize the Global Responsibility Conference in grade 10. Some of her favorite memories include beautiful sunny days on the field and listening to guest authors share their knowledge and recite their work in writing 12 class. Simone will be taking a gap year to pursue dance before heading on to post-secondary studies. Cindy Zhang. Cindy arrived as a boarding student in Simon's house in grade eight. She served as stage manager for the school musical and was actively involved with scorekeeping, the grad fashion show, and the Borders Film Festival. Cindy is off to the University of Toronto to study urban planning. <laughs> Samuel Kahn. Sam joined our community in grade four. His red hair and steely determination were marked characteristics on the rugby pitch. He also served as head of the Chinese Culture Club and as a member of the Prefect, Outdoor, and Athletic Councils. Sam's favorite school memories include the rugby tour to Portugal and Spain and winning rugby provincials in grade 11. He will head to Western University in September to pursue a dual degree in engineering and business. Danny, <laughs> Danny, Danny Lagadon. Danny moved to Victoria from Calgary in grade 11 and immediately joined our busy community. She was a member of the rowing team, service council, and free the children club. Her most memorable experiences include the service trip to Nicaragua and rowing nationals. Danny will travel east to Ontario to study kinesiology at Queen's University. Derry Lee. Derry brought his thoughtful and reflective nature to Bolton House in grade nine and has thrived as a member of both the boarding and whole school communities. His diverse involvement ranges from the intercultural and admissions councils to teens growing in faith, outdoor leadership, and the cross country team. Derry has fond memories of his service trip to Vietnam, his time spent as a link leader, and of the vocal music program and school musicals. He's looking forward to studying neuroscience and environmental analysis at Pomona College in Southern California. Derry is a recipient of the Darlene McHugh Award for his outstanding contribution to our school by building bridges for the betterment of the community. <laughs> Edward Lee. Edward arrived in Bolton House in grade 10 and our boarding community has been enjoying his singing and guitar playing ever since. He also shared his musical talent with the greater school community through Arts Council and the school musical, The Phantom of the Opera, and served as a prefect and link leader. Edward will be studying mathematics at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. <laughs> Jacqueline Lee. 
This busy boarder from Beijing joined Timmis House in grade 11 and quickly made her mark through both music and academics. She was also active in community volunteering and with the student and intercultural councils, cross-country team, business club, the JAG newspaper, and grad fashion show. Jacqueline appreciated all the opportunities outdoor leadership offered. Hopefully she will further her love of the outdoors at the University of California, Berkeley, where she will study biology at the College of Letters and Science. Leo Lee. Leo arrived at Harvey House in grade 10 and has proven himself to be a steadfast member of the boarding community. His interests and talents are diverse and led him to participate in the academic and service councils, as well as the technology, math, and business clubs. Leo is also involved in cross country and outdoor leadership and feels that his service trips to Kenya and Tanzania are highlights of his time at SMU. He will study electrical and computer engineering at the University of Toronto. Joanna Liang. Joining Winslow House from China in grade 10, Joanna's sweet disposition has been a great support for her fellow boarders. During her time on campus, she was involved with the business club and arts and intercultural councils, as well as rugby. She valued the opportunity she had to travel to Argentina for a service trip and hopes to continue volunteering in the future. Joanna will attend the University of Waterloo to pursue an honors arts and business co-op program. Madison Liu. This outstanding young woman has contributed to almost every aspect of the SMU community. Since joining us in grade four, Madison has dedicated countless hours to volunteer service and leadership development inside and outside of school through her work with the Volunteer Club, Prefect and Service Councils, 30-Hour Famine, Global Responsibility Conference, Grad Fashion Show, Chapel Team, and Service Leadership. She is also a gifted violinist and squash player. Some highlights of her high school career include the Case Leadership Conference and serving as a link leader. Madison will take her considerable talents to the University of Victoria to study business. For her outstanding commitment to service work at our school, Madison is a recipient of the Brian Dyer Award and as someone whom we would want as our next door neighbor for her kindness, citizenship and commitment to our community, she is also recognized as a recipient of the Nation Bowl. Caitlin McCauley. Katie joined us in grade four, and over the years she has demonstrated a flair for both art and athletics. She could often be found poring over a painted canvas in the art room or in the coxswain seat on the water. She also participated in student council and the service trip to Nicaragua. Her most memorable high school experience was winning a gold medal at the National Rowing Championships. Katie is heading to Queen's University in Kingston to study arts. Christian O'Kearing. Christian burst onto the smooth scene as a boarder in Bolton House in grade nine. Over the years, he has not only offered great fashion advice to his teachers and peers, but he has also contributed good humor and great leadership in many areas of our community. He has dedicated hours to the admission and service councils, service leadership, vocal jazz, the Meet a Wee Club, and teens growing in faith. His energy was also felt on the volleyball court, the track and field team, and the service trip to Mexico. He kept us all on track this year as head boy and gave an inspiring performance as Cole House Walker Jr. in the school musical Ragtime. Christian will bring his big personality and even bigger heart to Ryerson University in Toronto to study professional communications. For his dedication and outstanding success in musical theatre, Christian is a recipient of the Colin Skinner Award and for his excellence in character, athletics, arts, scholarship and leadership, he is also a recipient of the Kerr Cup. Rowan Reyna. Rowan arrived, arrived in our community in grade four. I recall meeting him for the first time in grade 10 when he provided me a detailed three-year plan for his personal and academic future. A young man with many talents, he was an active member of the rowing team, co-head of the academic council, and a member of the business club and reach for the top team. He also volunteered to support school events such as the Global Responsibility Conference and youth addressing local poverty. 
and community initiatives such as the Gorge Waterway Cleanup. His favorite experiences include outdoor leadership and serving as a link leader. Rowan will pursue engineering at the University of British Columbia. Jared Reese. This determined young man joined SMU in grade six. Known to enjoy a good debate, Jared was an active member and leader of the Adventures in Public Discourse Club and many Model UN events. He also participated in the Academic Council, the Duke of Edinburgh Award, and played squash. Jared will move east in September to pursue engineering at Queen's University. Jade Robinson. Jade joined our community in grade 10 and has made her mark over the past three years. She was an active member of the Prefect Council, Service Council, and Sustainability and Outdoor Council. She also worked backstage for two school musicals, founded the SMU Green Club, served as a link leader, and played soccer and rugby. Some of her best memories include her experiential and outdoor leadership trips. Jade will continue learning and leading at Queen's University, where she will study science. For her excellent contribution to the school, Jade is a recipient of the Headmaster's Award. <laughs> Dennis Segrist. Dennis joined SMU as a boarder from Switzerland in grade 11 and quickly made Barnacle House his home. He was a member of the Athletics Council and a force to be reckoned with on the soccer field. One of his favorite memories is winning at the Soccer Provincial Championships. After taking some time to work and travel, Dennis will continue his studies at either École Hôtelier de Lausanne or the University of Zurich. <laughs> Semele Smith. A talented actor and athlete, Semele joins SMU in grade nine. She was equally comfortable on the stage in the school musical, Ragtime, or on the volleyball court. She was also a member of the student council and traveled to Cuba for a summer sport and culture program. She values the great discussions our small classes provided and the people who encouraged her to excel. Semele will pursue, will pursue science at Queen's University in the fall. <laughs> Valerie Swanston. Valerie arrived at SMU in grade nine and quickly integrated herself into our service community. She served as co-head of the service council and traveled to Nicaragua over spring break to volunteer with women and children. She was also a valued member of the rowing team. Valerie will travel to Ontario in September to pursue medical sciences at Western University. For her outstanding commitment to service work at our school, Valerie is a recipient of the Brian Dyer Award. Helen Sito. Joining Simon's House from Hong Kong as a boarder in grade 10, Helen's quiet leadership has impacted our school community. She dedicated countless hours as a member of the business club executive, yet still found time to be involved with the Intercultural Council, school musical, yearbook, and scorekeeping. She welcomed new students as a link leader and outmaneuvered her opponents on the field hockey and rugby teams. She will look back fondly on her environmental outdoor leadership experience. Helen is off to the University of British Columbia to study engineering. For exceptional achievement in science, Helen is the recipient of the Alumni Association Award. <laughs> Poon Wanasathit. A boarder from Thailand who joined Harvey House in grade 10, Poon has made many contributions to our community. He participated in Intercultural Council in track and field, and he developed a new talent for design through creating posters for the radio club and annual jazz night. Poon will study computer science at the University of Toronto. <laughs> Lizzie Watson. Lizzie came to us in grade 11 from Comox as a recipient of the Best School Year Ever Scholarship and quickly demonstrated why she was an excellent choice for this honor. She has been a great support to her Winslow House sisters in boarding while achieving outstanding academic success and involving herself in many aspects of campus life. She served as co-head of the Intercultural Council and helped create the current Events and Politics Club. She was a member of the Grad Fashion Show Committee and a fierce competitor on the soccer field. 
One of her best memories is the outdoor leadership winter camp. Lizzie will reconnect with her family roots when she travels across the pond this fall to study history and international relations at the London School of Economics. For her excellent contribution to the school, Lizzie is a recipient of the Headmaster's Award. Luke Watson. Luke joined our community in grade 10. A commitment to ice hockey kept him active and engaged outside of school hours. He also participated in several service programs during school holidays with his family. Luke's next steps take him to Camosun College where he will pursue the pipe trades. <laughs> Lucy Zhang. Winslow House was thrilled to welcome Lucy from Hong Kong when she arrived in grade nine. This gifted artist and designer contributed her talents over the years, not only to the Arts Council, but also to numerous art shows and to the Grad Fashion Show. Additionally, Lucy was involved with the Athletic Council, Dance Committee, and was head of the Me To We Free the Children Club. She is also a dedicated volunteer and tenacious athlete, participating in rugby, track and field, and field hockey. She is heading to the Big Apple to enjoy New York living while studying interior design at Parsons School of Design, the new school. Jack Zhu. Jack has been a part of our community for five years, joining Bolton House as a boarder from China when he was in grade eight. He enjoyed playing basketball and participating in the Intercultural Council and Business Club. He is grateful for the encouragement he received from peers, teachers, and house parents to stretch outside his comfort zone and tackle new challenges. Jack's next adventure will take him to Ryerson University to study hospitality and tourism management. I will now invite Ruth McGee to present the students and her advising group. Chen Bai. He's coming. Hailing from China by way of Malaysia, Chen joined Bolton House in grade 10 and has enjoyed his three years at SMU. He's thankful for his experience here and showed it by taking advantage of what the school had to offer, partaking in a service trip, a visit to Japan, a college tour to Ontario, and participating in the cross-country team. And he may just win the prize for the most hours working out in the SMU fitness facilities this year. <laughs> Next fall, Chen will settle into life at the University of Toronto to study criminology. Joshua Benjamin. Having joined SMU way back in grade four, Joshua has made his mark on the school community. From involvement in the orchestra, Model UN, and Reach for the Top, to his, to his athletic participation in soccer and track and field, to his leadership on the Prefect Council in his final year, Joshua has contributed much to the school community. He will take his strong academic talent to study science at the University of Victoria this fall. Bryn Kathria. Joining SMU as a day student in grade nine, Bryn was known for her commitment to rowing and to service. Always with diligence and kindness, Bryn offered time during the summer making lunches in Brown Hall for children's charities. She will fondly remember her six weeks exchange to Australia as a highlight of her high school experience. This fall, Bryn will be found at the University of Victoria studying health information science. Sammy DeVries. Sammy came down from Nanaimo and was welcomed by Barnacle House in grade 11, where he embraced life at SMU on the field playing rugby and on the courts playing basketball. A natural fit for Sammy was his leadership role on the Athletic Council this year. His time at the school will be marked by the strong bonds he fostered with his housemates and teammates. Sammy will head to the University of Victoria this fall, studying in the Faculty of Social Sciences.
Sierra Dunbar. A day student who joined us in grade nine, Sierra will be remembered for her beautiful singing in the choir and in her lead roles in the school musicals, Legally Blonde and Ragtime. But Sierra's contributions were not limited to performance. She was active as a leader on the Prefect and Service Councils, the Grad Fashion Show, and in the Politics Club. Add in her tennis and volleyball playing, and you have a very busy student. Sierra will have an exciting fall starting her university life at the Queen's University Bader International Study Center at the Hurstmonceau Castle in England, where she'll embark on her studies in arts and astronomy. For her dedication and outstanding success in musical theater, Sierra is a recipient of the Colin Skinner Award. <laughs> Maggie Edwards. This talented athlete and artist joined the school in grade seven. Maggie enjoyed the wide array of experiences she was offered at the school, from the grade 10 program and outdoor leadership to athletic endeavors on the field hockey and soccer teams. Megan also worked hard to earn her bronze, silver, and gold Duke of Edinburgh awards. Maggie will be studying nursing starting this fall at the University of British Columbia, Okanagan. <laughs> Kathy Fang. Arriving from Shanghai, China in grade eight, Kathy was welcomed by Simon's House. She kept herself busy and involved in the school through her participation in the scorekeeping and business clubs. Kathy will fondly recall her strong relationships with her Simons House sisters as she heads off to the University of Toronto next fall to study humanities. <laughs> Bryce Forbes. Bryce joined SMU back in grade four and has been a strong presence in our school community ever since. Bryce will be remembered as an avid and talented rugby and soccer player and for his contributions to the athletic and service councils. And to top that off, he also played the cello right through to his senior year. Bryce will take his positive energy and great people skills to study business at Camosun College. <laughs> Kristen Gage. Christian joined the school as a day student in grade 11 and worked hard to take advantage of what the school had to offer. This highly accomplished rower also showed great skill as an artist and helped make props for the school musical. A member of the service council, Kristen involved herself in Free the Children and joined the service trip to Nicaragua in grade 11. A quiet, steady, and diligent student, Kristen will take her academic talent to the University of British Columbia to study engineering and participate in their varsity rowing program. Brian Gao. Coming from Hong Kong, Brian was welcomed by Barnacle House last year, and he has enjoyed his two years at the school, especially the strong friendship he developed with his boarding house roommate. Brian played tennis and took advantage of school ski trips during his time at the school. He has a keen interest in game design and appreciated the opportunity he had there to develop his artistic expression. Brian is looking forward to his, his next adventure as he heads to the University of Toronto Mississauga to study social sciences. <laughs> Ewan Hannigan. Ewan enjoyed the school as a day student starting in grade nine. He was friendly and welcoming as a presence on campus and helped new students through his work on the Link Leaders team. Ewan's effort and energy was deeply invested in his squash career where he experienced much success. He added to his sports involvement through his work on the Athletic Council. Ewan will take the next steps in his education by heading to Queen's University to study business. <laughs> Lilia Hube. Timis House welcomed Lilia last year as she moved to the island from North Vancouver. She has found opportunities for academic challenge and leadership involvement during her time here at the school. Lelia has an infectious, deep love of learning in all disciplines. A keen student of languages, Lelia has excelled in the study of both French and German and is generally delighted by all things linguistic. Lelia plans to take this talent and interest to pursue Celtic studies at St. Francis Xavier University in Antigonish, Nova Scotia next fall.
Aurea James. Aurea joined the school in grade six, vividly recalling her first day and learning how to tie a tie all by herself. She has mastered this and much more during her time at SMU. As this year's head girl, Aurea provided strong leadership to the community on the Prefect Council and also on the Service Council. Her dedicated advocacy for diabetes awareness has engaged and educated us all. An accomplished speaker of both Mandarin and French, Aurea valued her experiences traveling and learning in China and Quebec, and for her contributions to the Concordat Oratoire program. She will take her interest to learn more about health policy and disease awareness when she heads off to Trinity College at the University of Toronto to study international relations. For her outstanding achievement as a top linguist, Aurea is a recipient of the Modern Languages Award. And as someone whom we would want as our next door neighbor for her kindness, citizenship, and commitment to community, she is also recognized as a recipient of the Nation Bowl. <laughs> Ankit Giant. Ankit spent three years at SMU as a day student and distinguished himself as a highly accomplished mathematician. Following his academic interests and abilities, Ankit participated in the Academic Council, Reach for the Top, and the Math Club, and he was also a peer tutor. Ankit is a keen and talented swimmer who easily could have pursued a varsity athletic career. Instead, he has chosen to study computer engineering at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign starting this fall. Benjamin Keep. Ben joined SMU in grade five and established himself as a likable and friendly member of this grad class. Aside from a short career playing tuba in middle school, Ben has really focused his talent and energy playing basketball and soccer and giving his time as co-head of the Athletic Council. Thank you. That was a clap clap. Yeah, yeah. A skilled writer, Ben will take his education to the next level as he studies art, film, and media at Queen's University in the fall. For his excellent contribution to the school, Ben is a recipient of the Headmaster's Award. <laughs> Gladys Lin. From Taiwan via Richmond, BC, Gladys joined Winslow House in grade eight and has greatly valued her experience building strong relationships in the boarding house. She availed herself of a variety of learning opportunities at the school, from playing the clarinet in concert band and in the pit orchestra for the musical, Legally Blonde, to joining the business club executive in her final year. Gladys is a diligent and dedicated student and she will put that hard work and effort into her future studies in science at McGill University this coming fall. Jane Liu. From Taihuan, China, Jane came to Canada and eventually to SMU in her grade 12 year as a boarder in Simon's house. Jane loves to learn and really valued all the opportunities to challenge herself intellectually and academically here. Though only with us for a year, she participated in the service council, the cross country and sailing teams, and helped at this year's TED Talk event. A talented poet and student of English literature, Jane will most fondly remember the SMU library that remains light, even at night. She'll take her considerable academic talents to the University of British Columbia to complete a combined BA and Master of Management degree starting out in the study of English literature. <laughs> Emilio Macario. When he arrived in grade 10 from Via Hermosa, Mexico, Emilio joined Harvey House. As an avid student of politics, government, and history, Emilio found the school, founded the school's politics club this year. Valuing all things social, he was also head of the dance committee, helping to organize creative and fun events for the student body. Emilio was a leader in the boarding community, and during his senior year, he was head of Harvey House. He has really valued the relationships that he has developed with both students and staff during his time here. Next year, Emilio will be headed over the Atlantic to start his studies in political science at the University of Edinburgh.
Maggie Manson Blair. Maggie joined SMU way back in grade three, and this likable and talented artist and athlete has made her mark here ever since. Equally skilled at the canvas, in the orchestra, and on the soccer field, Maggie gave of her time and talent to all her pursuits at the school. She is most proud of having played soccer at the senior level throughout her high school career, leading her team as captain in her grade 12 year, and for the great memories made with her teammates both on and off the field. Maggie will take her sunny smile and artistic talent to Ryerson University in the fall, where she'll pursue art and contemporary studies. <laughs> Quinn Nowaty. <laughs> Quinn joined SMU as a day student in grade eight, and aside from a stint away at school in New Zealand, he has been a steady presence at the school, particularly in sports. An all-around athlete, Quinn was equally capable in rugby and basketball and even tried his hands at rowing. He gave his time and service in leadership as co-head of the Athletic Council. That's better. <laughs> Quinn is thankful for the friends, faculty, and family who supported him during his high school career. He has an ambition to become a commercial pilot, but that career will be on hold for a while as Quinn has accepted a contract to play professional rugby with the Toronto Wolfpack starting this summer. For his excellent contribution to the school, Quinn is a recipient of the Headmaster's Award. <laughs> Max Olberg. Max joined the school in grade four. He distinguished himself as an athlete in high school, earning an award for PE and participating in golf, basketball, and soccer. He was part of the Athletic Council in grade 11 and continued with his interest in soccer playing through right until grade 12. After graduation, Max plans to spend a gap year working and then pursue studies in business. <laughs> Jasper Shim. From Seoul, South Korea, Jasper joined Barnacle House in grade 11. He gained in perspective, experience, and worldview by his participation on the Intercultural Council and in outdoor leadership, as well as his service trip to Cape Town, South Africa. He appreciates the opportunities he was given here through his involvement in the psychology and business clubs and through teens growing in faith. Jasper plans to study business at Korea's Hanyang University. Donovan Sturdy. A student here since grade four, Donovan is an all-arounder with strengths academically in the arts and in athletics. He was a member of the school orchestra, played both rugby and soccer very capably, memorably winning the banner at Soccer Provincials, and he served on the Athletic Council. He was recognized for his achievement in both sciences and math during his high school career. Donovan also enjoyed the service trip to Cape Town, South Africa this year. Playing to his academic strengths, and athletics interest, Donovan will head east to Queen's University to study kinesiology in the fall. <laughs> Sonia Sun. From China via Vancouver, Sonia's bright light shone in Timis House since her grade eight year. Her intellectual, artistic, and athletic abilities have left a mark on the school, as Sonia will be remembered for her prowess on the badminton court the sweet sounds of her flute in the concert band and pit orchestra, and her strong academic achievements, especially in science and math. She was also a capable leader on the business club executive and as head of a uh, prefect council in Timmins House this year. Sonia will take her with her strong relationships she developed and will head across the country to the University of Toronto, where she will study engineering sciences. Derek Tam. Derek joined us in grade 11 from Macau and was welcomed into Harvey House. His quiet and kind disposition made him a good friend to his Harvey House brothers. He reached out to others through his involvement in the Intercultural Council. Derek enjoyed athletic pursuits at the school, trying his hand at basketball and rugby. He broadened his horizons by participating in the school musical this year as well. 
Derek will remain in Canada next year, heading across to Ontario, where he'll study humanities at the University of Toronto. <laughs> Avery Thorpe. This eminently likable and kind student joins Smoot in grade nine as a day student. While Avery is most recognizable for his amazing hair, he has made his mark at the school for participation in rugby, soccer, cross country, and on the athletic council. But Avery's not just an athlete, as his performances in the school musicals also demonstrated. He was a member of the newly founded Politics Club and even tried his hand at Model UN and debating in his senior year. He is a man of many talents, which he will take with him to the University of British Columbia to study political science in the fall. As someone whom we would want as our next door neighbor for his kindness, citizenship, and commitment to community, Avery is recognized as a recipient of the Nation Bowl. Angel Tsui. Coming from Hong Kong, Angel joined Winslow House in grade nine as an, and has enjoyed her experience at SMU, distinguishing herself as a capable athlete. She was proud of her accomplishment at learning field hockey in grade 10 and advancing to the A team by her grade 11 year. Angel is also a consummate soccer player. During her time at SMU, she was involved in outdoor leadership and link leaders, and she completed the Duke of Edinburgh Award. Angel plans to attend Western University in the fall to pursue management and organizational studies. <laughs> Carla Yanez. From Oaxaca, Mexico, Carla joined Winslow House in grade 10 and embraced the boarding school life in earnest. She was involved in many facets of school life, from set painting for the musicals to intercultural council to the business club and link leaders. She also participated in athletics on the cross country, field hockey, and swimming teams. Carla made the most of her opportunities at the school and is thankful to her teachers and to her family for their support. In the fall, Carla will return home to study architecture and design at the Tecnológico de Monterrey. We will now have a short interlude, and I ask Mr. Butterfield and the choir to come to the stage.
Thank you to Mr. Butterfield and the choir. My name is Timio Calistro, and I will be introducing the students in my advising group. I invite Mr. Chris Considine, representative of the board, to present the students with their records of achievement and graduation diplomas, along with Mr. Snowden and Mr. Johnston. We begin with Rawan al Ojeli. Rawan joined Winslow House in grade 11 as a boarder from Oman. During her time on campus, she participated in the Intercultural Council and Business Club, while also serving as a member in the Volunteer Club and the Health and Wellness Club. Particularly memorable for Rawan was her rock climbing experience as part of outdoor leadership. She heads east this fall to begin her studies in engineering at St. Francis Xavier University. <laughs> Walid Basher. Walid arrived on the rainy west coast two years ago from the hot desert of Doha, Qatar. Quiet and disciplined, Walid found success on our soccer and rugby teams while participating in the Intercultural Council and notably serving as head of Barnacle House this past year. He looks forward to beginning his engineering degree this fall at the University of Alberta. <laughs> Felix Butterfield. A member of our community since grade eight, Felix has applied his formidable violin talents in our orchestra, his rugby skills on the pitch, and his wry humor sprinkled everywhere. He may count as the first student to be an outdoor leader, orchestra concert master, and rugby provincial champion. He proceeds to the University of Victoria this fall to pursue his love of history. <laughs> Carlson Chan. Hailing from Hong Kong, Carlson joined the SMU and Harvey House community in grade 10. Along the way, he has been an active member of the vocal jazz and choir and a significant contributor to the Arts Council. Most notably, after his work in peer counseling and the Pride Alliance, Carlson helped to launch the Psychology Club at SMU. Unsurprisingly, he heads to off to study psychology this fall at the University of British Columbia. Carlson is a recipient of the Darlene McHugh Award for his outstanding contribution to our school by building bridges for the betterment of the community. <laughs> Ivy Shatvidichok. Ivy arrived from Thailand to join the SMU community and Timis House in grade 11, quickly becoming well known for more than just her superb baking skills. She was involved in the school's intercultural council, participated on the first ever girls rugby team at SMU, and was the highly capable head of the grad fashion show committee. Her calm, positive demeanor will no doubt be an asset as she begins medical school this fall at the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. For her excellent contribution to the school, Ivy is a recipient of the Headmaster's Award. Chelsea Chen. Chelsea became a member of the SMU community only two years ago. With her calm but purposeful approach to life, Chelsea has ably contributed to our badminton team and mathematics club. Just as noteworthy, she was a member of the service council and helped to lead the school's volunteer club. She heads east this fall to begin her studies at the University of Toronto's Rotman School of Commerce. Jacob Couchman. Jacob is a day student who began at SMU in grade 10. Not only is today his graduation, but he is celebrating his 18th birthday. When he is not erging or cross-training, Jacob can frequently be found on the water perfecting his rowing technique. He will be taking his strong athletic talents to the University of Victoria this fall, where he will join the men's rowing team and begin his studies in social sciences. Sean Davis. Sean is a day student who joined SMU two years ago after moving to the island from Vancouver. He was a member of the Military History Club and also participated on the tennis team. Sean is appreciative to his teachers for all the support they have given him, especially as it has helped him develop a newfound love for the social sciences, which he will be pursuing at the University of Victoria this fall.
Emma DeMarkey. Emma is a day student who joined the SMU community in grade 10. In addition to being able to pursue her love of biology and especially insects, Emma is grateful for the strong friendships she has forged along the way and to her parents and teachers for the support they have given her. She will be close by this fall when she begins her studies in sciences at Camosun College. <laughs> Abby Fraser. <laughs> Abby arrived at SMU in grade five. Over the years, she played on our school soccer team and field hockey team, serving as co-captain this past year, an experience she describes as one of the highlights of her time here. Abby was also involved with the student council and acted as a link leader this year for new incoming students. She is eastward bound this fall when she begins her studies at Western University in the Ivy School of Business. <laughs> Max Freund. A day student at our school since grade nine, Max contributed to our community through his participation on our soccer and rugby teams jazz band, grad committee, and helping out in our tuck shop. He is grateful to his rugby coaches for the mentorship he received over the years. Max will be taking a well-deserved gap year before beginning his studies in athletic therapy at Camosun College. I am Geis. A day student who began at SMU in grade five, Iam was a committed violinist in our school orchestra and a member on the academic council. He also played on the cricket and soccer teams and this year was the head of the grad committee. He is grateful to his teachers for their support over the years and looks forward to beginning his studies in commerce at the University of Victoria this fall. <laughs> Sofia Gutierrez. Part Mexican, part American, and hopefully by now, after being here since grade eight, part Canadian, Sophia is our bilingual blonde who has given generously of her time to several endeavors, including the service council, prefect council, and grad fashion show. She was also a buddy reader at the junior school, a member of the rowing team, and a school ambassador. After a much anticipated mini gap year, Sophia will begin her studies in liberal arts at Pepperdine University. Tony He. Tony made the journey over from southern China to join SMU in grade nine. He is grateful to his English 12 teacher and to his house parents for their support over the years, which saw him participate in service council, math club, the soccer team, and our recently formed bridge club. Tony also counts among his fondest memories his two service trips to South Africa and Argentina. He will begin at Western University's Ivy School of Business in September. Chad Hu. Chad is a day student who began at SMU in grade nine. A member of the concert band, academic council, and badminton team, his favorite memories include the outdoor leadership trips, as well as his experiences on the soccer B team, otherwise known as Gregor's Goons. He embarks this fall on a degree in life sciences at Queen's University. <laughs> Jackie Huang. Jackie is a boarding lifer from China who entered Bolton House in grade eight. He counts among his favorite memories at SMU his service trip to Argentina while contributing as a saxophone player in our concert band and a participant on our rugby team. He begins his studies at the University of Toronto this fall. <laughs> Maya Jervis. Maya is a lifer who started at SMU in grade one and is now a member of Winslow House. She was active on the Intercultural Council and participated in the grad fashion show and last year's school musical. Athletically, she was a member of the field hockey team as well as the school's first ever girls rugby team. Not wanting to distance herself too much from her Winslow sisters, she will be staying close by to attend the University of Victoria where she begins her studies in social sciences this fall. Gwyneth Kanar. Gwyneth joined our school community in grade four. This avid Harry Potter fan was a member of the student council, 
while also participating on our volleyball team where she had the opportunity to compete in Cuba. Another experience Gwyneth remembers fondly is her service trip to Nicaragua. She is excited to travel this fall to a slightly colder place, Kingston, where she will be pursue her arts degree at Queen's University. <laughs> David Lee. David joined Bolton House as a boarder in grade nine. He participated each year on the school's basketball team while also being involved on the Intercultural Council. Particularly memorable for David was his service trip to Mexico in grade 10. He travels east this fall to begin his studies in management at the University of Toronto. <laughs> Edward Liang. Edward joined the SMU community in grade nine, carving out a name for himself on the piano and alto saxophone as part of our jazz band. A member of Reach for the Top and the Outdoor Council, Edward also played on our school soccer team and the Island Championship winning badminton team. He will be pursuing his passion for political science this fall when he begins his studies at Western University. <laughs> Jason Liao. Jason joined our school community in 2013, quickly becoming involved in several athletic teams and participating as a member on the Athletics Council. Along with the friends he has made, a significant memory for Jason was his experience with the Outdoor Leadership Program. He will begin at the University of Toronto in the fall to pursue a degree in management. <laughs> Andrea Nasnidalova. Andrea began at SMU in grade nine, becoming a devoted member of the concert band and jazz band, while also participating in last year's school musical. Not just an artist, Andrea was involved with the Arts Council and Service Council and played on the girls' volleyball team, where she helped to referee and act as assistant coach. She is looking forward to colder weather, which she will find in abundance when she begins her science degree this fall at Acadia University. For her outstanding commitment to community service outside of the school, Andrea is a recipient of the Gruce Salver Award. Livia Newman. A SMU student since 2010, Livia has flourished in the fine arts scene. In addition to being heavily involved in the Arts Council, strings performances, and school musicals, she rounded out her time participating on the volleyball team and helping with various service endeavors. This talented artist is off to the University of Victoria this fall to pursue her passion in fine art. For her dedication and outstanding success in visual arts, Livia is a recipient of the Nesta Bowen Horn Award. Roy O. Oh. A native of South Korea, Roy joined Barnacle House in grade nine. He participated on the rugby and soccer teams and was a member on the Sustainability and Outdoor Council, all the while exploring his growing interest in computer science, technology, and app design. He will continue to pursue this passion at the Virginia Institute of Technology this fall, where he will begin his degree in computer science. Brennan Parson. Brennan arrived at SMU only two years ago from Medicine Hat, Alberta, to make a new home in Barnacle House. In that time, he participated on the school rowing team, was an executive member of the business club, helped organize the grad fashion show, and was co-head of the investment club. He will attend the University of Toronto this fall to study finance and mathematics. Molly Robson. Molly joined our school community in grade six. Thoughtful, opinionated, and hardwired for activism, she distinguished herself through her involvement in the Arts Council and Pride Club, while also serving as a link leader and playing in the violin section of the orchestra. Molly counts her spring break trip to Europe in grade 11 as one of her top life experiences ever. Her literary prowess should hold her in good stead this fall as she begins the Vic One program at the University of Toronto. Glenn Sung. Arriving in grade nine from South Korea as a boarding student in Harvey House, 
Glenn quickly put his many artistic talents to use, contributing to the orchestra and film club while producing music in his spare time. A member of our sailing and soccer teams, Glenn also served on the Sustainability and Outdoor Council. He moves east this fall to pursue his social sciences degree at the University of Toronto. <laughs> Connie Wang. Connie has been smiling ever since she arrived from Beijing two years ago to become part of Timis House. This happy-go-lucky student was involved in cross-country and swimming, the backstage crew of the musical, and our intercultural council, where she helped to organize events celebrating Chinese culture. This fall, she will begin her studies in statistics and mathematics at Pennsylvania State University. <laughs> Aubrey Williams. This soft-spoken, unflappable scholar joined our school community in grade nine, becoming a committed member of the academic council and captain of our Reach for the Top team. A highly accomplished rower and cross-country runner, Aubrey is also a published creative writer and an outdoor leadership participant. He will be heading east this fall to pursue his engineering degree at Queen's University. As a strong athlete, scholar, and servant leader, Aubrey is recognized as a recipient of the Carol Lobb Award. Bruce Wu. Bruce joined our community only two years ago, arriving from Beijing with long hair and plenty of questions. Thoughtful and meticulous, he contributed to the Intercultural Council, participated in cross country, and was head of our Kung Fu Club. He begins his studies in psychology this fall at the University of Toronto. <laughs> Fo Wu. Fo is a boarder in Timis House from Northern China who joins SMU in grade 10. While she was involved in the business club and yearbook club, it is in her artistic endeavors where she truly shone, as evidenced by the winning parklet designed by her and her partner that was installed on campus last year. Her other artwork is proudly displayed around campus and, as co-head of Arts Council, she helped to organize events that showcase the arts this year. This fall, she will begin her studies at McGill University's School of Architecture for her dedication and outstanding success in visual arts, Fo is a recipient of the Nesta Bowen Horn Award. <laughs> Tyranny Warola. <laughs> Tyranny arrived as a boarding student in Simon's house in grade 10. With her trademark wit and humor, she quickly became involved in our community lending her time to the Intercultural Council, the field hockey team, and two school musicals. Most notably, she was the yearbook editor and this year's head of Simon's House. She travels east this fall to pursue psychology at Queen's University. For her excellent contribution to the school, Tyranny is a recipient of the Headmaster's Award. Jake Yu. Jake joined Harvey House as a boarder from China in grade 10. He was involved with the badminton and cross country teams as well as the musical stage crew. This year, as the co-head of Green Club, he helped to develop the school's energy lab initiative and crowdfund for the installation of solar panels on the science building. This fall, he will be attending the Rotman School of Commerce at the University of Toronto. <laughs> Jasmine Yu. Jasmine is a boarding lifer from China who joined Timis House in 2012. In that time, she has made an indelible mark on the visual arts at SMU, helping to co-design a winning parklet now installed on campus, displaying her artwork around the school, and participating in the Arts Council. A member of the Intercultural Council, Grad Fashion Show Committee, and Business Club, Jasmine was also this year's energetic head of Timis House. She begins her studies in architecture and design this fall at the University of Toronto, for her excellent contribution to the school, Jasmine is a recipient of the Headmaster's Award. <laughs> Ariel Zhu. Ariel is a boarding lifer, arriving from southern China to enter our school in grade eight. She has been roundly involved in school life, from strings in the school musical, 
to the grad fashion show and radio club, to the rugby and field hockey teams. Quiet, fun, and a loyal friend, Ariel will be attending the University of Toronto to pursue her degree in architecture. I'll now invite Allison McCallum to present the students in her advising group. David Allens. David arrived in September from the Bahamas to grace us with his presence and his voice for just one year. He leaves having made an impact on the Adventures in Public Discourse group and with gratitude for the exposure he gained to new areas of interest. He has enjoyed being part of the musical offerings, including taking part in all the small ensembles. Watching him change seats at the concert was impressive. He will start his studies in political science and music at the University of Toronto in the fall. <laughs> Alex Balfour. This affable young man from Seattle considers his experiences in the winter camp of outdoor leadership among his favorite times at SWS. He's also grateful for having had the chance to take part in the rowing program. He now sets his sights on traveling across another body of water to go to University of Edinburgh in the fall, where he will embark on law studies. <laughs> Leah Balter. Leah came to us for her grade 12 year from Baltimore, Maryland, thanks to an introduction through the best school year ever competition. She has generously shared her incredible intellect with students through her work with peer tutors, and she was a strong contributor to Winslow House, Intercultural Council, and Volunteer Club. Next stop on her journey is a gap year in Morocco to learn more Arabic before she embarks on Middle Eastern and Neuroscience Studies at Stanford University in the fall of 2018. For her excellent contribution to the school, Leah is a recipient of the Headmaster's Award. Gina Brown, a South Africa and Spain resident, a German passport holder, and a Canadian high school diploma. These are just a few of the attributes that Gina holds. She's been actively involved in Model United Nations and developed a love for politics, both of which will serve her well when she takes on studies in international relations and business at King's College London. First, however, she'll have a grand gap year adventure that will span at least three continents, four countries, and will allow her to take part in language, learning, business, acting, and humanitarian service. Jordan Eggles. Jordan joined us for her grade 12 year and jumped into our community in August with a volleyball trip to Cuba. A participant in Athletic Council and the Grad Fashion Show, Jordan has appreciated the many opportunities and experiences that SMUS has offered her this year. For her next adventure, she plans to study international business at Carleton University in the fall. <laughs> Vanessa Harrison. Vanessa arrived from Campbell River on our campus last September. When asked what she appreciates about our school, she remarked, everyone is kind, helpful, and is motivated to learn. And the very same can be said of Vanessa. She has made her mark through her contributions in the school orchestra, volunteer club, psychology club, and the intercultural council. Having secured a very early admission offer to the University of British Columbia, she'll now head to Vancouver in the fall and pursue studies in psychology. Akina Ishiwatari. Akina hails from Kanagawa, Japan via Ontario and has been a delight to have her in our midst for her grade 12 year. She's enjoyed all the experiences offered to her this year, including choir, intercultural council, volunteer and business clubs, and the opportunity to be involved in the grad fashion show planning. She plans to begin studies in international relations at the University of British Columbia in the fall. Edwin Kim. A keen athlete, Edwin has enjoyed his time on the soccer field and basketball court. He's been a contributor to the Intercultural Council and taken part in acoustic concerts where he showed off his newly found talent for singing. Come September, he'll move from Victoria to Waterloo, Ontario to study at Wilfrid Laurier University and pursue his interests in computer science. <laughs> Yuli Kim. Yuli joined us as a boarder in grade 10 from South Korea and found her spot in the orchestra playing oboe and in the business club where she's worked her way to the executive. Along the way, she's taken part in musicals and intercultural council and truly loved her diverse experiences at the school. 
Yuli will be attending the University of Victoria in the fall to study psychology. <laughs> Nick Lee. Nick came as a boarder in grade nine and leaves here with a sense of fulfillment. During his time, Nick has been involved in the Intercultural Council and was a member of the cross country team, took part in a service trip to Nicaragua and was co-head of the technology club. Along the way, he has also developed a talent for pro programming and computer science, and it's in this field that he will pursue his studies at Boston University in the fall. <laughs> Jack Levelt. In ragtime, this multidimensional and talented student played the roles of a president, a firefighter, and most memorably, J.P. Morgan. In the senior school, he was also a military history buff, reached for the top teammate, and a rugby player. Happy to have finally had a song to sing, Jack is ready to take on a new role in September at the University of Victoria, where he will explore his interest in political science. For his excellent contribution to the school, Jack is a recipient of the Headmaster's Award. <laughs> Jasper Lee. A boarder in Harvey House from Beijing, Jasper has left his mark as a flautist and member of the Academic and Intercultural Councils. Jasper's taken part in service trips and has truly enjoyed all the clubs, councils, and leadership activities during his time here. He's heading to Western University in the fall to start a degree in business. <laughs> Kelly Liu. Hailing from Shenzhen, China, Kelly has shown herself to be a hardworking and determined young person. She's been the head of the scorekeeping club and enjoyed playing flute in the concert band. Patient, responsible, and kind, she has given freely of her time as a volunteer tutor for younger students. Kelly will begin the Honours Arts and Business program in the fall at the University of Waterloo. <laughs> Miwa Masuda. Miwa's journey through the senior school included a memorable exchange to India in grade 11 and being elected as a school prefect in grade 12. She's had a unique experience as someone who was in boarding and has been a day student. These experiences combined with orchestra, outdoor leadership, academic field trips, and field hockey all enriched her time at the school. Miwa plans on studying arts and sciences at the University of British Columbia this fall. <laughs> Nirof Mehta. Nirov lives in Egypt, but came to SMUS for the fall of grade 11 as an exchange student from his boarding school in India. He liked it so much here that he switched schools in order to spend his grade 12 year with us. He's been involved in academic council, was captain of his basketball and tennis teams, and most importantly to him, was a happy member of Harvey House. Nirov is going to continue to explore Canada by moving next to Montreal to study business at Concordia University. Kelvin Mutt. <laughs> Originally from Hong Kong, Kelvin has thoroughly appreciated the sense of community provided through his time in boarding and as a member of Barnacle House. As a basketball player, percussionist, and link leader, he's had the chance to develop his teamwork skills, and he's taken on leadership roles in committees and clubs. He'll start at the University of British Columbia in the fall with a plan to study filmmaking or psychology. Marco Ng. Marco is a boarding student from Prince Edward Island. Involved in Academics Council Tennis and Entrepreneurship Club, he's appreciated being part of a supportive and accepting community that encourages personal development. He enjoyed his service trips and being part of our globally minded community. He'll move to Ontario this fall to join the Life Sciences Program at the University of Toronto. <laughs> Katie Ostriker. In two short years, Katie has stretched herself beyond limits she thought possible. She's shown a keen engagement in her academic courses, a strong involvement in rowing and rugby, and a commitment to public discourse. Along the way, she found lifelong friends in the boarding community and Timmis House in particular. She also developed a passion for economics and business, and it is this that she will study at the University of Toronto this fall. <laughs> Esther Ojim. Esther will not soon forget her experience as Sarah in ragtime this year. 
She's appreciated the many opportunities made available to her and found her place in Intercultural Council, DGIF, and Business Club. She was also a key organizer of the last two diversity conferences and a link leader. In September, Esther will start at Western University studying human resources and business. Anya Paibun Sirijit. Anya is a boarder from Thailand and she's appreciated being in a supportive community of teachers, peers, and house parents. She thoroughly enjoyed her service trip to South Africa this year, her involvement in business club, and her participation in both yoga and rock climbing. Anya is going to stay on the West Coast while studying social sciences at the University of British Columbia in the fall. <laughs> Laura Queen. Laura's involvement in the senior school has been focused on a host of student life activities, including student council, link leader, dance committee, and grad committee. She also displayed her talent in the classroom, at recitation events, and on her, the soccer pitch, and she took part in a school exchange to Australia. Her next search adventure begins this fall when she'll move to England to study law and criminology at the University of Manchester. Joshua Santo. Joshua is a tenor in the Choral Music Program, a founder of the Psychology Club, and a strong participant in Arts Council. He is a committed academic who has thrived on the challenge and support offered by his teachers who have nurtured his discovery of a higher level of learning and interconnectedness to the world. Joshua is very excited to begin his studies in engineering at the University of British Columbia in the fall. Leah Sparkman. <laughs> Leah arrived as a boarder from Portland, Oregon and immersed herself in our community. She's taken on many roles in her time here. A basketball player, Sarah in Ragtime, a link leader and head of house for Winslow. Leah credits her teachers for helping reveal, sk reveal skills that she didn't know she had, like singing, and her SMUS for helping create memorable experiences, particularly through sports. Leah's next move will be to California, where she will attend Santa Clara University and study history and English. <laughs> Mateo Strastis. Whether grandfather in ragtime, stage crew in phantom, Simon Stimson in our town, or simply by being himself, Mateo has made an impression. A helper in the tuck shop, member of the Arts Council, he has particularly enjoyed the sense of togetherness seen during assemblies, ceremonies, and at events like Keep the Beat. He's very grateful to have had teachers who helped him reach his potential in his time here. Matteo will begin his studies in computer science this fall at the University of Victoria. For his excellent contribution to the school, Matteo is a recipient of the Headmaster's Award. Elena Strasser. After grade 10 here and a grade 11 in Germany, Ellie couldn't resist the pull of SMUS last fall when she was on campus with her family. So she rejoined Timmis House in late September and dove into service and intercultural councils and the politics and entrepreneurship clubs. She enjoyed her time singing in the choir and being surrounded by people from all over the world while living halfway around the world from home. Ellie plans to move to England to study international business and law at King's College London. Yvonne Tong. As a boarding student from Shanghai, China, Yvonne quickly distinguished herself as a mathlete extraordinaire and a willing tutor for anyone who needed help, especially in Winslow House. She was head of the math club this year and also took part in business club, intercultural Cultural council, scorekeeping, and badminton. Yvonne has appreciated the opportunities she's had to share her talents and witness those of her classmates through chapel, clubs, councils, and activities. For her next move, Yvonne will go to Western University where she will study mathematics and business. <laughs> Caitlin Torstensen. A student at our school since grade eight, Caitlin played the trumpet in ensembles and has been part of both the soccer and the inaugural girls rugby teams. She's glad to have this school as her launching pad into life and is grateful for the encouragement she was offered to pursue her interests and grow into herself. 
She's writing this next chapter as she goes, and it will include travel, employment, and time to enjoy living life to the fullest without a school schedule. Krissa Trump. Immigrating to Canada from South Africa just before the start of grade 11, Krissa distinguished herself immediately as an athlete, starting with field hockey and cross country, both during the fall season. She followed that up by trying her hand at basketball, rowing, track and field, and rugby, and made time for Free the Children, choir, and outdoor leadership too. Her det determination and team spirit will serve her well as she begins her studies in exercise and wellness in the fall, with plans to pursue her long-held dream of becoming a winemaker in the future. <laughs> Philippe Welter. Philippe arrived in grade 10 from his hometown of Los Angeles as an American Luxembourger who had attended a French pattern high school. He quickly found his place in our school on sports teams in the classroom and most significantly in Bolton House where he was chosen head of house for this year. In his three years at SMUS, he was a drummer in jazz band, a tennis player, an outdoor leader and a member of both service and intercultural councils. This fall, Philippe will take up residence at the University of Chicago where he plans to study business and economics. Chloe White. Chloe has distinguished herself as a hard-working young woman who offers much to the community. She's been a committed Cox and rowing and a cross-country runner, a head of student council, a link leader, a service trip participant, and a member of the dance committee. She is grateful for the support she's had that has enabled her to be both challenged and successful. She'll attend the Honors College at Washington State University this fall, where she plans to study sciences and be in their rowing program. For her excellent contribution to the school, Chloe is a recipient of the Headmaster's Award. <laughs> Alec Shu. Alec has lent his prodigious musical talent to us through piano accompaniment, composition, conducting, playing, and singing, including a role in ragtime this year. He's also been involved in Model UN Reach for the Top and Academic Council, and made an important contribution as a head of pride. He will take his dapper wardrobe to Ontario this fall to study engineering science at the University of Toronto. For his dedication and outstanding success in music on a variety of stages, Alec is the recipient of the Blencoe Cup. Thanks to Mr. Considine for presenting the Records of Achievement and Graduation Diplomas to these students. And I'll now pass the microphone to Denise LaMarche, Director of Academics, to introduce the lifers. Good evening. I have the distinct pleasure of introducing our lifers to all of you. These students joined the school in kindergarten or grade one and have been with us for the entirety of their school career. Traditionally, we invite their primary teacher from these early years to this ceremony to hand out their graduation diplomas. As a beloved and skilled teacher, Doreen Metcalf's passing three years ago after a lengthy illness was a profoundly sad event for our community. And so we felt it was fitting to honor her memory by having her children join us in presenting the ROAs to this year's lifers. Please welcome Cam and Beth Metcalf to the stage. <laughs> Matthew Bernston. Matthew is a lifer who began at SMUS in kindergarten. He played on our golf team and served on the Sustainability and Outdoor Council and is grateful to his PE teachers for teaching him about health and wellness. This fall, he will begin his engineering degree at the University of Victoria. <laughs> Jasper Bosley. Jasper is a lifer who joined SMUS in grade one. He is a force to be reckoned with on the basketball court, soccer field, and rugby pitch. And he also served as a link leader and a member of the service trip to Nicaragua 
and Athletic Council. He cites the Spain and Portugal rugby tour as one of his favorite memories along with the strong friendships he has made. Jasper will study commerce at Queen's University. As a strong athlete, scholar, and servant leader, Jasper is recognized as a recipient of the Carol Lobb Award. <laughs> Riley Clare. Riley is a proud lifer who joined SMUS in kindergarten. She was involved in many facets of school life, from the soccer field to the art studio and the graduation committee. Riley honed her people skills as a member of the student council, link leader team, and experiential program. She is grateful for the unwavering support of her teachers and peers. She will take her kindness and tenacity to the University of British Columbia in the Okanagan to study psychology. For her excellent contribution to the school, Riley is a recipient of the Headmaster's Award. Nicholas Considine. A true all-rounder, Nick has taken part in everything the school has on offer. He was a longtime contributor to the school orchestra, an active rower, a committed school prefect, and a dedicated member of numerous councils. He notes that the exchange to India and the service trip to Nicaragua were highlights of his school career. Nick has also thoroughly enjoyed his wide-ranging academic pursuits. The University of Chicago is his next stop, and it is there that he will pursue studies in economics and political science. <laughs> Ricky Fabris. This energetic and affable SMUS lifer will best remember his many experiences in outdoor education that he enjoyed while at the school. Naturally, in his senior year, he was head of the Outdoor Council and part of the Sustainability Council. Ricky also enjoyed many sports in his time at the school, including sailing, rowing, rugby, swimming, and hockey. An avid and capable musician, Ricky contributed his talents to the school musical pit orchestra as well. Ricky's affinity for life on the sea will take him to the Canadian Coast Guard College where he'll study navigation. Aaron Forbes. As an SMUS lifer, Aaron has developed many talents and abilities, such as her fine artistic skill and her athletic pursuits in cross country, rowing, and track and field. She has also contributed much to our school in the way of service and leadership. Aaron was strongly impacted by her time on a service trip to Nicaragua in grade 11, so it's no surprise that she was involved in the service council and was co-head of Free the Children. This experience led to her desire to study international relations, which she will be undertaking starting next fall at the University of British Columbia. Grace Hart. This focused and determined young woman has been a steady presence on our campus and contributor to our community. She has enjoyed her time as a soccer player and as a member of the Student Council, and she is grateful to the school for providing her with readily available support. She is ready to take her strong learning skills to the University of British Columbia in the fall, where she will pursue a Bachelor of Arts in Psychology. <laughs> Bryn Haydock. This lifer joined us in kindergarten and could most often be found on the soccer field, rugby pitch, or basketball court. Also a link leader, member of outdoor leadership, and on the athletic council, Bryn's most memorable school experience was the rugby tour to Spain and Portugal. He will travel east to study at Queen's University in September. Noah High. Noah is a lifer who joined SMUS in kindergarten. During his time with us, 
He took advantage of the wide variety of academic course offerings and contributed to the Academic Council. As head of the Reach for the Top team, he challenged staff and students alike his vast knowledge, and one of his famous, favorite memories is attending the provincial tournament. Noah will study engineering at the University of Alberta. <laughs> Sophie Jones. During the senior school years, Sophie was a member of Pride Alliance, student council, chapel team, and the knitting club. She also thoroughly enjoyed taking part in the summer musical theater courses and the Fringe Festival. Sophie is most grateful to her teachers, family, and friends who have formed her support network, encouraging her to take on every challenge. She has every reason to feel as proud of herself as we are of her. Sophie will start at Quest University in the fall, where she will have the chance to explore her diverse academic interests in the liberal arts program. Rowan Coe. As an SMUS lifer, Rowan enjoyed a variety of experiences during her time at the school. A cellist who really valued her time in the school's orchestra and an all-around fine artist, Rowan offered service to the school on the Arts Council. She was a regular feature at the quiz night event, helping out in this popular school fundraiser. Next year, Rowan will be heading off to sunny and occasionally cold Alberta to study environmental science at the University of Calgary. <laughs> Jane Leggett. Jane is a lifer who began at SMUS in kindergarten. Equally talented in arts and athletics, Jane has had her artwork proudly displayed on campus over the years while being a committed member of the volleyball and track and field teams. Also a link leader and head of student council, she counts her trip to Cuba with the volleyball team as one of the highlights of her SMUS career. She follows in her grandfather's footsteps this fall when she begins her science degree at Queen's University. For her excellent contribution to the school, Jane is a recipient of the Headmaster's Award. Jessa McKeldry. Jessa's bright smile has been lighting up rooms since she joined SMUS in kindergarten. A dedicated volunteer, she served as co-head of the service council. She was also a force to be reckoned with on the volleyball court and enjoyed the opportunity to welcome new students to SMUS as a link leader. Her fondest memories include the service trip to Nicaragua and the sport and culture trip to Cuba. Jess Jessa will trade west for, <laughs> Jessa will head west for east in September when she begins her studies in computer science at McGill University. For her outstanding commitment to service work at our school, Jessa is a recipient of the Brian Dyer Award and as someone whom we would want as our next door neighbor for her kindness, citizenship, and commitment to community, she is also recognized as a recipient of the Nation Bowl. Anna Mollenhauer. Anna is perhaps best known for her passion and skill in field hockey, but she has also left her mark as a member of the running club, soccer team, and prefect council. She enjoyed her time in the school orchestra as a link leader and in outdoor leadership, and is grateful for all the opportunities and support she has had here. In the fall, Anna will go to the University of Victoria to play field hockey and begin her studies in education. As a strong athlete, scholar, and servant leader, Anna is recognized as a recipient of the Carol Lobb Award. <laughs> Jameson Schultz Franco. <laughs> Jameson is a lifer who joined SMUS in grade one. Living life with a permanent smile, this happy cricketer brought his many talents to several endeavors, including the violin section of the orchestra and the athletics council. Jameson was also a committed member of the basketball team and soccer team, which won the provincial championships and a rising star in the world of cricket. 
He begins at Ryerson University this fall, where he will pursue a degree in sport media. As a strong athlete, scholar, and servant leader, Jameson is recognized as a recipient of the Carol Lobb Award. Jonathan Sudel. Jonathan is a lifer who began at SMUS in kindergarten and has contributed immensely to our athletics program ever since. In addition to being a school prefect on the Athletics Council, John has been heavily involved with our rugby and soccer teams, helping both teams to provincial championships. He counts the rugby tour as one of the most memorable highlights of his MS SMUS career John will head eastward this fall to begin his engineering degree at Queen's University. As a strong athlete, scholar, and servant leader, Jonathan is recognized as a recipient of the Carol Lobb Award. <laughs> Laura Williams. <laughs> Laura began at SMUS in kindergarten and has flourished artistically at the school giving generously of her time to the Pitt Orchestra, creative writing, and the art studio. Laura also played on our basketball team and was involved with the Arts Council, of which she was co-head this year. She leaves for Calgary this fall to pursue her passion for fine art at the Alberta College of Art and Design. For her excellent contribution to the school, Laura is a recipient of the Headmaster's Award. Benjamin Wingert. Ben has been a committed member of the soccer program at school, and he counts the 2016 Provincial Championship win among his best memories of school. In addition, his service trip to South Africa this spring was a life-changing experience for him. He is most grateful to his coaches and teachers who have supported him along the way through high school. He will find his place this fall at Brock University where he will start his studies in social sciences. <laughs> Zachary Zwicky. Zach rose to the rank of Supreme Commander of the Military History Club and School Prefect this year. In senior school, he took advantage of the opportunity to go on exchange to India and to Nicaragua for a service trip and was involved in academic council and rowing. Zach will take his abiding interest in history and global affairs to the University of Victoria in the fall where he will start studies in political science. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating our graduating class of 2017. Before we uh, move on to valedictorian, I'm uh, now delighted to ask this year's head boy, Christian O'Kearing, and head girl, Oria James, to come forward to be thanked by next year's incoming head girl, Asia Emerson, on behalf of herself, and head boy, Sean Finnamore, who unfortunately cannot be with us this evening. Good evening. Christian and Oria, 
On behalf of the school as a whole, from the bottom of our hearts, we thank you for your dedication to improving each of our school years. Ranging from sparking a conversation with us in the hallway, choosing fantastic memes for assemblies, to letting us sticky note Mr. Snowden's car. Be proud of yourselves for the incredible job you've done this year as head girl and boy, both behind the scenes and in the spotlight. Christian, when you walk into a room, it changes. Your bubbly personality, humor, and kindness are energizing to anyone in your presence. You are truly a model citizen. Oria, your passion, compassion, and exuberance inspire others to be better, happier people. Together, you are a dynamic duo, forces to be reckoned with, ready to set the world on fire. We wish you all the best of luck on your endeavors. To the entire graduating class, congratulations. It's hard to imagine the school without you. Although we no longer have you to look up to, every time we look down at the alumni walk and see your names engraved in stone or see a sticky note, we will be reminded not only of how much we have grown, but of how much we have to live up to. You set the tone for what was an amazing school year. Thank you for your friendship, your legacies. We look forward to hearing all about your adventures outside of the bubble. Thank you. It now gives me great pleasure to turn the microphone over to a wonderful young man who you have been introduced to this evening, highlighting his commitment to our school and his selfless dedication to his peers and to everyone in our community. Along with these wonderful characteristics, I also refer to him as perhaps one of the most kind-hearted people you may ever meet. With this in mind, there is uh, little surprise that when it came to representing the graduating class, this leader on the court on the cricket pitch, around campus, and as we've heard, future telecaster of ESPN, <laughs> was wholeheartedly endorsed by his peers, ladies and gentlemen, the 2017 valedictorian, Jameson Schultz Franco. Valedictorian, thank you very much. Uh, very nervous tonight, guys, very nervous. Um, I hope you will indulge me if I refer to my notes at any point during the course of the speech. <sighs> Strawberries. Protein powder. Creamy, non-salted peanut butter. Olives. Wait a minute, this isn't my speech. Hold up, sorry, one second. This is my shopping list. Sorry, Mom. Sorry. Sorry, for, that's my bad. Uh, don't worry, I'll get that stuff afterward. Here's my speech. Here we go. Good afternoon, parents, staff, faculty, family, and esteemed guests. Welcome to tonight's ceremony where we gather here to celebrate these wonderful people beside me, the graduating class of 2017. I'd like to highlight that we share this night with Mr. Snowden. Thank you, very, thank you for everything you have done for this school and this grad class in particular. You have created a beautiful environment for us to grow up in, and the impact you have had on our class has been nothing but positive since the first day of junior school. I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Jameson Schultz Franco, and I'm a lifer here at SMU, as you have heard many times tonight. I want to say thank you to the class of 17 for electing me as valedictorian. It is truly a tremendous honor to represent you all. To be honest, I feel as though I've been handed the final baton in a very, very long relay race. I hope that I'm able to cross the finish line without pulling a hammy first. However, I think I've stretched enough. Family. Everyone here tonight is a part of a family within one big family. The big family we all call 
Grad 2017. And like families, we may not always love each other, but that is the beauty of family, because here we are together in one room. Starting as one small family in what looked like a huge kindergarten classroom, we grew up learning together, eating together, playing together, and occasionally wrestling. As we grew, we gained new members of the family, and we grew in both size and character. By the time we reached grade five, we were the big fish in the school, but that didn't last long because one year later, we were at the bottom of the food chain once again. And then came middle school. Grade six was a big year for us as a grade because not only did we gain a new bunch of family members, but attending the middle school meant more freedom, or so we thought. We had access to the tuck shop, which led to an instant addition of 15 pounds of pure body fat for all the kids who ate kimchi religiously for lunch. Myself being the main culprit. We tested different activities and searched for our passions during exploratory. But somehow the bulk of our grade would always end up trying to play floor hockey with Mr. Pollock. As for others, we spent time building bikes with Mr. Jackson, or, or, or building robots with Mr. Floyd, or making origami with Heart Sensei. But no matter the activity, we were always able to find a way to make it fun. And speaking of fun, one school-wide school shindig that was always a big hit were the middle school dances. Absolutely nothing is more fun than a bunch of middle school kids dancing to music and occasionally grabbing each other's hips from a lengthy distance away. <laughs> we had to be careful though, because if we got any closer than that one meter limit, the ruler would come out and we'd get measured for regulation distance. <laughs> we capped off our experience at middle school with our grade eight dinner dance, where we showed off strictly the most fashionable trends. An example of this would be rocking the very dashing jeans and Hawaiian polo look while subtly topping it off with a nice pair of aviators. When we arrived at the senior school, suddenly we felt the need to be grown-ups. Yet we were still curious how students could know when class is over without a bell actually ringing. And so the family grew, new members were adopted, and some voices became slightly deeper. Everything felt much more significant in the senior school. And even though our lives seemed to be so different, much had stayed the same. We were still learning together, eating together, playing together, and yes, still wrestling. Now here we are, after having completed four successful years of high school, leaving a legacy at the school that we hope will never be forgotten. What is our legacy, you ask? I asked some of our teachers to give some input on what they thought of us as a class. One teacher called us energetic, to the point where I don't, know, I don't think they even know I'm there. Another said, personality, lots of personality. Whereas others took a different approach and called us humble and understated. Lastly, my personal favorite, one teacher called us really, really good looking. <laughs> no, sorry, I lied, no one ever said that. But point is, our legacy will be vast, but that is only because each and every one of us has accomplished something unique. And isn't it amazing to think that every individual in this class has accomplished something of our own at SMU? Some accomplishments are to be considered slightly more impressive, but nevertheless, we have achieved them. Whether it is being signed to a professional rugby team or spending $50 a week strictly at the tuck shop whether it is performing your very own violin solo in front of hundreds of people, or repeatedly being fined for parking in the school's inner driveway, <laughs> whether it is designing a sculpture and a bench in one beautiful piece of art, or clocking a toilet in a Salt Spring hotel with Fruit Loops and Mio Sports Squirt, <laughs> whether it is beating the S&P index for stocks with $250,000 of real money invested, or always saying, Trust me, trust me, trust me. I'll try harder next year. Whether it is spending all your money and most of your parents' money at Red Barn for lunch every day, or being so loud to the point where all of the, all of the librarians want to quit their jobs. Sorry, Miss Ways. <laughs> we, as a grad class, have accomplished these things. And on a more serious note, like any grade, we are not perfect, but it is both our successes and our imperfections 
that make us a family. And what tends to happen when we live life with such high expectations of ourselves and others is that we live one milestone at a time and don't actually stop to reflect. Whether it be the next report card, the next tournament, the next debate, or the next play, we are always looking for what's next. With that in mind, I ask that you take a second now and think about all that you have accomplished. Think back to when you came to SMU, whether it was September 2005 or September 2016. Think of all that you have learned. How many times did you stop and think, wow, I'm doing well? It's easy to let these moments pass and not take time to stop and ponder your successes, especially in the moment. Now, I ask that you reflect on why you were successful during your time at SMU. Personally, the only re reason that I've gotten things done is because of the support that I had from people close to me. My mom, Wendy, my dad, Alfonso, my grandma, Dorothy, my LR advisor, Miss Laura Miller, my uncle Boyd, and my brother, Trenton. Without you guys, I wouldn't have been on time for games, I wouldn't have been surrounded by a loving, supportive community, and most important of all, I would not be the person that I am today. And that's just a portion of the people I'd like to thank. Others who, who have made a difference in our lives, you most definitely know who you are. To the moms and dads who drove us to early morning orchestra at 7.15 a.m. every Tuesday. To the grandmas and grandpas who were there for us whenever we needed. To the teachers who completely ignored the late work policy. <laughs> and to the brothers and sisters who supported us emotionally through it all. Whether you are family, a friend, or all of the above, your loving contributions to every student within the grad class of 2017 have been nothing short of spectacular. Thank you all. And, well. And don't forget that in a family, love is unconditional. As we embark on this journey in the coming years, we will encounter extended members of our family through the tight network of alum at the school. I challenge you to feel that and commit to it. Embrace the power of family and pay it forward. Because why not? And so when you're 50 years old, running your very own multi-billion dollar company, and a resume comes across your desk with a glaring smooth stamp on it, Pick it up and say, hey, anything for family, and then give them your job. Wait, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Uh, where was I? Oh, sorry. Uh, oh, yeah, say, hey, anything for family, and then give them some extra consideration, because that's what family does. In this moment, we can appreciate that we've reached one of our main goals, as many great times have been had. All of these special moments are impossible to recap in just one speech. But tonight is not just about celebrating what we have done, it is about celebrating what we are capable of doing. From here forward, our knowledge will be tested. We will be pushed out of our comfort zone by people we don't even know yet. We will have new firsts and will share new experiences with people who live on the other side of the country or to the south or overseas. It is both humbling and invigorating to reflect on those people out there right now maybe sitting in a graduation ceremony at this very moment, who will soon figure so prominently in our lives, who currently remain unknown to us, but quite shortly will become additions to the family. That is part of the beauty of the adventure we are about to undertake. And yet, no matter what friends you make or places you go in the coming years, do not forget your current family and the way they have helped shape who we are at this moment. Whether it is one month or one year until we all gather next, grad class of 2017, as a family, we've made it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'd just like to uh, call Jameson back. Uh, you've left your, rece your recipe card. Yeah. You've got to pick, pick that up on the, on the way home. Yeah, there we go. There. And grads, just so you know, you'll be delighted to know that you've dodged uh, the bullet 
because we just put the brand new late work policy in the parent teacher or parent student handbook <laughs> at, yesterday. As we approach the conclusion of the ceremony, I will remind all major award winners to return to the stage for pictures, and then we would like to welcome all the grads and their families uh, to light refreshments in the Crothall Center Quad immediately following the recession of the grads and the faculty. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand and sing the first verse of the school song followed by Reverend Kevin Fletcher with a final blessing. standing. We've been here for a while and our thoughts are probably starting to wander towards whatever is next on grad-related activity lists. In less than two minutes, we'll be on our way. But before then, I have one last mind-blowing thought to share with you, grad class of 2017. Here it is. We're all very excited but not only for you. I know it's shocking. We're excited for ourselves as well. Think about our faculty and staff. Your departure represents the culmination of so much effort. You crossed the stage, we did our part. Yay us. And think about your parents and families. Time, money, heart, soul. What resource haven't they put on the table to get you to this point? You cross the stage, they did their part. Yay, them. On top of all that, there is a wide world out there. And as Mr. Snowden reminded us, it's filled with joy and hurt. And you are now a part of it in a new, more mature way, forged and tested. This moment isn't just about you stepping out on your individual journeys. It's also about you stepping up as part of a global community. This stage you crossed, you're needed on the other side of it. So you see, we're glad for you, we're glad for us, and we're glad for the world. And here's the thing. Even though you've crossed the stage and passed the baton, remember no matter what happens, good or bad, you will always be a part of this place, this community, this family, this home. So in light of Jameson's advice, let's all of us take that one last look around and breathe in this very significant moment before it fades to memory. Following our tradition, I'm going to close with a prayer. Recognizing the breadth of our diversity, please interpret my words in a way that's meaningful for you. Let us pray. Gracious God, we are thankful for our students, the whole diverse lot of them, athletes and performers, artists and entrepreneurs, activists and scholars. We're also thankful for their support crew, parents and teachers, cooks and coaches, all who poured themselves into this most worthy of endeavors. 
And may all these communal efforts lead not only to bettering our individual lives, but also to making the world a better, more just, more peaceable place. So we pray, amen. You're ready. It's time. Go in peace. Vivat.